Welcome back to the charismatic voice. We're about to go down a rabbit hole of vocal nerdery and fun because the winner of our February 2022 Patreon poll is White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. I have heard this song before, but I've never done a deep dive into it. So let's get to it. Atmosphere set up by the instruments is so on point. I feel like we're in a puff of smoke in Alice in Wonderland. We've got this caterpillar and it's just all a little bit disorienting. It's incredible. Uh, there's also some really, really cool things that Grace does vocally, which I want to talk about in a bit, but let's go back to the beginning. Just appreciate the way they set this atmosphere. It's almost got like a military snare happening in there too. <laughs> the choices in this guitar melody uh, are very exotic. Just the pitch choices in general, right? They're not um, pulling from a standard Western scale, if you will. It's definitely bringing in some exoticism, uh, kind of Middle Eastern exoticism in particular. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so playing with that really exotic skill. One pill makes you larger, and one pill makes you small, and the ones that mother gives you don't do anything at all. <laughs> so she leans into that exoticism too with that uh, little run in there in the middle. It's much closer to um, some interesting folk stylings that we'll have from the Middle East. Additionally, listen to the way that she sings through her consonants, especially the nasal consonants. Nasal consonants are ones where you essentially close off the mouth with some sort of articulation and it causes the consonant sound to travel through the nose. So that would classify an M, right, where the mouth is completely closed, or an N, where the tongue closes off the sound from exiting through the mouth in the front. It also uh, applies to an NG, N, the back of the tongue in that part is closing off the exit in the mouth so that it all ends up exiting through your nose. One pill makes you larger and one pill makes that you end. small and the ones that mother gives you. Listen to the way she, she leans into the M of mother extra before it even starts going through. More. And the ones that mother gives you mother. don't do anything. <laughs> that shake is so good. <laughs> Go ask Alice when she's ten feet tall. And here you go chasing rabbits. <laughs> Poor Alice. 
throughout that verse, you can hear the way she is lingering and partially drawing out various consonants. She does some with R's especially, which are really fun. R's are fun consonants to draw out. A lot of times if you get too much R coloring in a consonant, it can be considered ugly in tone. But in this case, the way she's doing it is really fun and playful. <laughs> Just, yeah, there's a lot of playfulness in this. I actually, I'd read that this was one of the first songs to sneak by drug references in mainstream radio, <laughs> right? Got yeah, one pill makes you smaller, one pill makes you larger, and then there's the ones that mom gives you that don't do anything at all. So <laughs> it's quite amusing, I think. Let's go back a little bit. So she, instead of taking that R constant or R colored vowel of caterpillar, instead of taking that and making it more British, more open, um, she plays with it and she actually like travels through it. So instead of just caterpillar, which would be a very appropriate and classical way to sing that caterpillar, instead of caterpillar, she goes caterpillar has. <laughs> you hear that R approximation travel through her tongue and her mouth. <laughs> The um, little additional, she's giving it essentially like an extra bump. Um, again, it's uh, that's essentially a vocal elaboration that is very reminiscent of folk music. One more time, it has a, an exoticism about it. This works really well, partly because they're in this land of Alice, which everything is kind of exotic there, right? Um, it really works for the idea of psychedelic rock, I think, as well. She's got such a steady belt when she gets up there. She's got a very strong voice. It feels very calm and unwavering. I like the way um, she just seems so vocally stable here. Let me kind of from here. <laughs> This is really great sustain up here. She's in a full chest voice at this point, but taking it high. So we call that belting, right? Um, some people will describe belting in different ways, but it's often used to describe when you are singing in a lower vocal register, but um, singing higher pitches within that register in particular. So she's keeping it in her full chest voice at this point. It creates a very, very strong, powerful sound. Uh, can be very difficult to maintain. And she's not having any difficulties at all here. The sustain on her belt is spectacular. It even has some nice, even vibrato that's happening in there. Let's go back just a little bit. This 
long this is so short it needs to be much 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 longer uh, i'm gonna go back and listen to that one more time in here and that's because i want to talk a little bit about her tone quality it's common when you're belting in that range um often people struggle at first with the sound dropping back chest voice it's kind of heavy to lug up and so the sound will drop back and it'll feel swallowed at first and then often they'll figure out oh if i can keep it forward i can go up often a little bit higher keep the sound a little more slimmer it goes up higher and then uh, we'll get a much more brassy sound in the front a uh, much more forward placement a little more in your face that that happens especially in broadway and and lots of different uh contemporary music too she is maintaining a balance of both it's really good she has that forward focus but she hasn't lost the roundness in the back at the same time and it just sounds really really good and really full and i like that a lot let's go back one more time and listen through Great pitch. So steady. <laughs> and I like the extra oomph at the end. The mood of this piece is glorious to bask in. It's perfect for tons of film and TV placements. The band does a great job of setting that up with the groove and then with some really fun exotic melody choices, and they keep that going on throughout. And then Grace's voice has just a wonderful timbre and yet playfulness at the same time. I love the way she's able to sustain those lines and really keep incredible placement throughout her entire chest register. Very, very nicely done. I thought it was so interesting in reading about it too that she said that coming to San Francisco to, to join the band was essentially her jumping down the rabbit hole moment. So what an appropriate song for them to create together. Thank you so much to our patrons for this recommendation. This is really fun to analyze. I love going back and looking at classic stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would like to see some more analysis of our other patron winners, you can check that out in this playlist over here. And I hope to see you in those videos soon.